Welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Now we head straight to our second conversation where we look at the cost of election, uh, of course, in Nigeria. Now the chairman of INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yukub, uh, Yukubu, says that we need 305 billionaire, you know, to conduct uh, the 2023 elections. However, he's also said that 140 uh, million has been made available, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we also will be looking at, you know, the cost of conducting elections in Nigeria. Now, some quarters are saying this does not make sense. Uh, we do have Adegbero Nuruddin, who joins us. He's a public affairs analyst. Good morning, Adegbero Nuruddin. Yeah, good morning. Okay, so um, let's start off this conversation on this note now. Uh, looking at the costs... In 2011, according to INEC, we spent 112.9 billion naira for the exercise, and that's for 73.5 million voters. Now, in 2015, we spent 108.8 .8 billion naira for 68.8 million voters, and it rose to 242 billion uh, in 2019 elections. I mean, that's the much that I have. And now we're looking at 305 billion. Does this, is this realistic? Because some persons have said this is unrealistic. It doesn't make sense. What are your thoughts? Well, um, in Nigeria, our budgeting system is faulty in all ramifications from the executive arm of government to the legislative arm of government. Even some part of the judicial part, although we know that they leave uh, service to the one of the judiciary, but in terms of the high net, uh, as much as uh, a lot of us really want to have uh, a very good uh, election at every point in time, looking at it uh, historically, from 1999, 2023, 2027, 2011, 2015, 2019, and then up to the one we are looking up to, 2023. If you look at that amount and considering our financial factors in Nigeria, the money is huge. But at the same time, if you look at what is being projected for legislative arm of government and executive arm of government, and the value they are going to give us, then you know that the one of uh, INEC, we can't say it is too much. If we consider other harm of government. And another thing again, there is this. Um, the INEC is looking up to like an eight on off election before 2023 election. Apart from the state election, they are having three federal of representative elections. There are six assembly elections. And also, there is going to be, you know, AKT, uh, and we are also looking at those uh, elections. The money, in terms of our financial balance, is huge. But when we are looking at the values of having a very credible election, and the types of election we want to have in 2023, the money is not too much. Mr. Nuruddin, can you hold on? So what you're saying is now you're equating um, um, uh, credible elections to costing more money. What you're saying is the more money we spend, the you know, likelihood or the, the increased likelihood of having free and fair elections. Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, uh, we know that the uh, money is so important in our own policy because there are some certain things. If some certain things are all right in our environment, we don't suppose to have the kind of Google project for our electoral system. Look at it, for instance. There are some certain people that are going to be mobilized. Even the security operatives. If INEC should tell us how they will spend in the area of mobilization, which is not supposed to even be so, if you know how much they are spending on transportation on the day of election, which is not supposed to be so, if we have indigenous te technological services, 
you don't suppose to spend as much as that. Look at the beef as they just introduced. If it is locally produced, then automatically the price will have gone down. So it really brings a lot of things to bear in our in our own uh, environment. Although that amount will never bring us the uh, good results. Because it doesn't say because we are spending huge amounts of money then you are going to have free and fair elections. Free and fair elections start from the politicians. It has to do with the electorate. It has to do with the uh, structures that have been on ground. What are the structures? In terms of security, we are talking about police officers. Is it police officers that will not be given feeding allowance? Or is not going to be well fed on the day of election? Or you will not see a place to buy food on the day of election? I've covered elections and I've seen a police officer from morning till 2 o'clock. He will not have opportunity to eat. Tell me, if a politician brings the food, will he eat? Oh, what, what, then another thing again is this. Mr. Nuruddin, that, the last that police officer, uh, just in the, Mr. Nuruddin, can election. you hold on? Um, that police officer will eat, you know, with or without the elections. The elections aren't necessarily meant to feed that police officer. If there were no elections on that day, he will find a way to eat. So it's a failure of the Nigerian police uh, you know, force uh, itself to be able to cater for its officers. Not necessarily a failure of INEC to cater for officers that are uh, you know, conduct uh, conducting elections. The Nigerian police force itself and the allegations of corruption that have also plagued that system, that's what has failed to provide for that officer. And yes, I agree with you that, you know, INEC should make its own provisions for catering uh, for um, uh, the uh, people who will be uh, participants and people who will enable the elections to take place. But, you know, that's, that doesn't defend a police officer not being able to eat. Um, another thing that I would mention is, you know, you, some people might argue that this is, you know, just inflation and, you know, and the fact that, you know, everything has gone up in price in the last 10 years in Nigeria. And so you'd expect that the cost of elections would also increase. But does this also tell you that it, not very much has changed, you know, with Nigeria as a country that should have made elections a lot cheaper? Mr. Nuruddin, can you hear me? Uh, hello, yeah, I can hear you. Yes, go ahead. One thing that I, I agree that, um, you know, on the day of election, Nigerian police officers on duty on that day is part of the property of the INS on that particular election. In fact, they are critical close to that in that election. If they are faulty, then the election will be messed up. So, they, it is all in compassion. So, uh, there is no way you can really put uh, police officers or security officers on duty on the day of election out out of the free and fair election and looking at the uh, um, our environment now everything is costly we are doing but when we are looking at that amount compared to what is a uh, max for education for security and all that German areas of our environment, then the money is too high. But if you look at the value that is going to bring to us as a political environment, then it is not too much. Because everything we do stands on the oppose of good credible election. That credible election no matter how much it's going to put on our table, we have to put it on. But every amount allocated by National Assembly to INEX must be duly accounted for. Any act of corruption inside the National Assembly must go be. That is what is important. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm also still trying to understand why um, INEC could have to, you know, cater for the need of, you know, police officers on the day of the election. I mean, like, we should be looking at other issues. 
yes, I know that there might just be provision for, you know, refreshment and all of that, but it feels like, you know, the bulk of the monies will be spent on, you know, catering for the police officers uh, who would be actually working on that day of elections. But moving away from that now, let's also look at some of the arguments surrounding, you know, the cost of uh, conducting elections, because it feels like we seem to be, you know, uh, increasing. Maybe next year uh, it's going to be a different figure entirely. I mean, of course, uh, after the general elections. Now, uh, some people say that civil servants are responsible for this, and that's because they have actually, I mean, they inflate the cost of, uh, you know, uh, prizes. They inflate the figures, and uh, that is the reason why we constantly have, you know, the high cost of conducting elections year in and year in. Well, you, we can all rule it out. Um, anything that involves civil servants in our environment, you, you know something must hide, something must be subtracted, something must be multiplied, and must, something must be divided. You must be spending something inside it. Um, but we have to consider something. If INEC wants to prepare for an election, the election they prepare for in 2019 cannot be the same election they are going to provide for in 2023. And don't forget, the electoral devices they have used in 2019 is different from the one of 2023. And don't forget, look at the one of the five molder, the big bags they are just using now. Is different from the car reader of 2019. So maybe what we just need to do is this. We should fix the angle of five bars, uh, the B bars that we want to use now. Automatically, we sh it should not be part of what we are going to pay for in another subsequent election. That one is one. If we fix the area of that electronic devices used in the election, automatically, that money should not survey again. Although, the way we run our budgetary system in Nigeria is very, very wrong. And is so corrupt in nature. Look at the, the money budgeted for the presidency, vice presidency, national assembly. You will see a thing reoccurring every year. Like uh, a TV set, um, cutlery, computers. Is it every every year we buy cutlery in our various houses? Is it every year we buy a computer set? Is it every year we buy radio set? So all these things are part of our budgetary system that are very very wrong. Oh. So if the issue of BFAS has been dealt with. In 2003, budget, uh, 2002 budgetary system we are talking about, we should not hear about it again. It should be fixed permanently. <laughs> INEC is understaffed. In, they are understaffed. They rely majorly on ad hoc services in every election. All right, Mr. Which is going to make them to be paying more at every point in time. So, so there's no election I, I want us to, that only the Abusa can really, can, can really do without the um, uh, assistance from the adopters. Mr. Nuruddin, final question, and if you can respond to this in, in 10, 15 seconds. Would you expect or would you want that the INEC chairman, uh, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, gives a proper breakdown of how they have uh, you know, put together 305 billion naira as their budget for elections. Would you want to see what exactly that money will be used for? Logistics, electoral materials, and the likes? Come again, I can't hear the question very well. All right, I'm asking, would you want, and do you expect that Nigerians would like to see a proper breakdown of um, what exactly 305 billion naira will be used for by the INEC chairman 
Because we can simply name figures, you know, but if, if we do not have a proper questioning and proper auditing as to what exactly these funds would be used for, then we're, we're throwing money away. So would you, you know, as a Nigerian, demand that the INEC chairman gives a proper breakdown as to how he arrived at 305 billion naira? Important thing. Important thing. Is not about just giving us a figure of 40 billion naira Annually, then 305 billion naira for a, an election. We want to see the breakdown from the beginning till the end. The kind of budget system we are still operating in Nigeria across all the ministries and agencies, they are too secretive. They are masquerading the budget system. They should break it down for us, irrespective of the number of pages. Let us see if you are going to buy computer sets, how many computer sets, at what rate. If you are going to buy VFAP electoral devices, how much is one? Let us know how many pieces do you want to buy. All right. If you are going to spend on ad hoc service, how many ad hoc staff do you want to recruit? How much per day? Note that on the day of election, you'll be giving them 500 naira, 100 naira. 1,000 naira to go and eat. If you are going to spend on transportation, how much are you spending on transportation? How many buses are going to involve in how many states? If you are going to pay for other logistics, break it down, let us see it. If all, right. all our policy system can be well explicit for us to see, we can now determine if the money is valuable compared to the services that INET wants to render. If they can commensurate, if it is logical, if it is arithmetically with the, with the book right. of finances we have. Uh, then Mr. Nuruddin, we would have to wrap up here and that's why I wanted a very brief answer with the last question. Thank you very much for joining us this morning and uh, we look forward to having another conversation about this, um, hopefully, if there is a breakdown. Thanks for joining us thank once again. All right, thank you. Absolutely. And this is where we say goodbye this uh, morning. Thank you very much for your time. A uh, couple of days to Christmas. It's the Christmas season here on Plus TV Africa. And we wish you a very, very interesting day ahead. I'm Osaogi Ogbon. And I am Nessie Boko. It's okay to follow the conversation if you missed out on any part of it on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Plus TV Africa. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel as a Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. So have a wonderful day.